יש לי רקורד, יש לי רקורד, אני עושה... Thank you, many of them. Uh, we have another seminar, the same one as this one today, at 4 p.m. Israel time. I'm invited to come again or invite any one of your colleagues. Uh, so sit back, enjoy, and uh, thank you. So when it comes to provision ISA, when it comes to LPR in general, um, Sorry, just a second. Sorry, just one second. Thank you, sorry. So when it comes to LPR or not only LPR in general, um, LPR is a game changing technology. Uh, today it sits in the center almost of every project. Uh, it's fit for many, many applications. We'll try to talk on some of them. Uh, the LPR market is growing dramatically over the last few years and it's about to boom even more in the coming five years. Um, uh, main reasons is price dropping all the time. New solutions come, uh, come with it including parking management solutions and uh, many others. Uh, we will try to show you a little bit today about some of the solutions that Provision ISR is offering to this solution. So when we talk about LPR in general, we are talking about three main segments in LPR market in general. The first one is gate control. Everything related to controlling the gate, who is coming in, who is coming out, and so on, we'll talk about some of the features that are available and what you can do with it, but we are talking about gain control in general. And the second market is, of course, city surveillance or road surveillance, street monitoring and such. And the third one is highway. Those are the three main markets that use LPR a solution in general. Let's dive in a little bit to everyone. The gate control, you can, there's endless amount of application that you can use with it on private houses um, that has some kind of a gate. Uh, many markets, we are talking about a lot of private houses such as South Africa, Europe and such. You have a lot of private houses, private residential houses with their own gate. In most cases, they use remote controls to open the gate or some kind of apps to open the gates. Um, I can tell you from a personal experience, I have my own remote control gate. Uh, not the best solution. I'm always losing my batteries. I'm always losing my remote control. When it comes to this, uh, even uh, for a private house, a good LPR camera that can do basic things, just opening the gate for myself or my family members uh, is a perfect solution. Second market, is, uh, of course, private parking lots. If we talk about uh, residential buildings that serve much more than one house, but building apartment or an uh, office building, which has some kind of a barrier, some kind of a gate, you can also use it for that kind of market. Public parking lots, naturally, if we're talking about public parking lots, here we also may need to do some kind of integrations. Um, in most cases, you will need to do some kind of integration with the billing system uh, software or something like this to correlate between the LPR and the billing, the ticket for the, for, the, for the guests that came to park. And of course, the fourth market, when you talk about game change call, is all the toll roads uh, that you have some kind of a toll, automatic toll or such that works on license plate and can recognize the driver license plate and open the gate for him because he's got an, an automated uh, a license or something for the, for the tolls. This is the main market. And by the way, this is our main market as Provision ISR that we are approaching. This is the biggest market share in the LPR market in general. Gate control, everything related to gate control. Um, the second market that uh, is also very interesting is city surveillance. And we talk about street safety, um, 
in general, we can talk about uh, smart cities or safe cities, any kind of those projects when need to be installed, LPR cameras up to a speed of 40 kilometers, we'll talk about some of the features, but up to a speed of 40 kilometers per hour, the LPR is, is good, perfect solution. Uh, also petrol station, naturally, in most of the petrol station, there is kind of a need also to monitor the LPR camera, the LPR, uh, the license plate itself, in case of a theft or in case of any problems or such. So you want to be able to install cameras that's able to recognize license plates as well and to track them and to log them in the recording. The third market that uses LPR in general is highway, highway patrol. Uh, in hybrid patrol, we are talking about a different kind of LPR cameras. We are talking about high-speed LPR cameras, usually cameras that can recognize plates that drive even 150 or 200 kilometers per hour. We're talking about very, very expensive, usually more very expensive cameras, usually, usually used by the police or by the government in general. Who's, to do speed control, to charge automatically and, and speed highways, uh, to do vehicle monitoring in general. It's a small segment of LPR market, but it exists. When we talk about Provision ISR, Provision ISR cameras is fit mostly to the two main markets, which is gate control and street monitoring city surveillance. Uh, Provision ISR uh, cameras uh, we brand it under the name Smart Plate, License Plate Recognition Cameras. However, it's a solution that involves two parameters. One is the camera itself, and the second one uh, is the software. We'll get to it in a minute. But when you talk about the cameras itself, we talk about two main models. Most LPR cameras that you will find on the market, we're talking about two megapixel cameras. We have two models. The differences between them is the, the lens itself, whether it's a narrow lens or a wider lens. The wide lens, the, the wide lens more fit to gate control, where, because the camera is installed very close to the gate itself. We need a wide area of field. That's why we have 2.8 to 12 millimeter motorized lens. And the, the narrow lens, which is seven to 22, is fit mostly to street monitoring or, or uh, the general view of the street. A main uh, character of those cameras, when it comes to vehicle speed, maximum speed that the camera can be able to recognize license plate in a proper way is up to 40 kilometers per hour. Um, it can recognize up to two license plates per second. Like I said, we have two models different ranges. Uh, up to today, we did a lot of it, uh, implementation in many countries, already in more than 50 countries. Uh, that we know how to recognize the car plates. We know to distinguish between letters, characters, uh, numbers, and all kinds of characters uh, to ignore all kinds of unrelevant characters. Uh, the accuracy is quite high, even at night performance, and in order to to reach good results, you need to know how to set it up, and this is what we will try to teach you today. All provisioning ISR cameras come with a built-in SD card. It's part of the camera, you don't need to buy it, it's built-in inside the camera for a number of reasons, mostly because of the total solution that we are offering, including a software, good software. And of course, and I think the most important one is the dedicated parking management software. The dedicated parking management software is the key element to win the LPR market. Because just to provide a good LPR camera, there's a number of camera of companies that do it today, offering a good LPR cameras, including our main competitors. However, it's not enough. Just to have the camera is not enough. You need to have a good uh, software that is easy to manage and that can give you full flexibility to manage the camera and even to manage your parking lot. Whether it's a small residential house, that all you need to do is to register yourself, your wife, your kids, 
the gardener that might come once a week or I don't know what, and to give him access to enter that small parking lot. And up to bigger parking lots, we can, which I can manage a few companies inside, I can invite guests, we can do a lot of features. And for that, we developed a dedicated software that is giving for free as far as, the, as far as the camera. When you buy a camera, you can download our software for free to manage one camera and to manage a parking lot. With many, many features, we have a dedicated seminar just for that. It's called Shob software, which is a parking management solution. And it gives you full flexibility and many features to control all types of parking lots, from the small one to the big one. Like I said, we have a dedicated seminar just for that, when we can show you all the features. Later, we will show you also in our website where you can find more information about the parking management in, in general, which involves both the LPR camera and the shop software. Today, we're going to focus about the LPR camera itself and how to install it properly, height, distances, and such, and how to set it up properly, how to do the setting properly for daytime, for nighttime, and such. And the one to help me today is David uh, Siboni from our technical department, which has done most of our seminar lately. David, you're welcome to start your part. Thank you, Amnon. <laughs> Hello to everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Now we will continue with the more technical part. If you have any kind of a question during the webinar, don't hesitate, ask it. Uh, you can open your mic, but it is preferable to use the chat. And uh, later on, we will have time for uh, to open the mic and uh, ask uh, questions. So after talking about uh, the different markets that LPR can be used for and the different solution it provides, Let's see how to actually make it work in the best way possible. Uh, what you can see right now in front of your eyes is a, a, a bit of a demonstration on how to install the camera in the proper way. So AI cameras and artificial intelligence cameras, including LPR among them, relies on the quality of the image. Of course, we need to provide the camera for the best uh, conditions to get the, the proper license plate. So in our case, we have an example for a, a car that is in the frame. Okay, we can see the actual height, uh, height of the camera. Okay, we can see the, the car inside it. And we can see the target. What is the target in our case? Of course, it is the license plate. The target height should be more than 10% of the scene, but less than 50. Now think about it for a second. It's just a demand to have a license plate in a, in a normal size, okay, so that the license plate is not huge, because then the camera won't be able to recognize it, and the license plate is not tiny, because then we will have the opposite problem, which is too small, and the, the plate won't be recognized. So something like this will be very good. You have a large range to play with. The overall target size, okay, the, the First, we talked about the height of the license plate. Now we talk about the entire size of the license plate. Yet again, we have a lot of uh, range to play with between 6% to 50. Of course, at 6, it will recognize, but it's much more uh, recommended to use 10% and above to have a, a fairly sized a license plate in order to get the proper recognition. Uh, now we can see some examples for how it looks on the field. So in our case, we have in here, we have a, a plate that will be recognized between 6 to 50%. In our, in the second image right now, we can see the plate is very far away. So the size of it compared to the entire frame is 3.4%. It's not uh, good enough, it's too far. This one also is too far, 4.5, even though the, the car is a little bit closer. Starting from this image, we can see that the car has moved a, a few centimeters closer to the camera, so it gives a, uh, a optimal range for a recognition, but of course that much more better than that will be when the car gets even closer to give us 14.9 and even 24%, which will give us perfect recognition. How to install the camera? The lights, the camera can recognize the plate uh, much, much better if the plate is a uh, horizontal, uh, is uh, stable, okay? like it's a, uh, it, it is not tilted to the, to the side. So if the plate is something like this in zero degrees, then it means that the plate will, will be recognized until five degree, uh, the plate will still be recognized. 
but if we reach to a 10%, then the plate start to lose the recognition. The camera won't be able to recognize it very good. I can tell you that we saw cases that camera does recognize even far than 10 uh, degrees, but of course it's not ideal and they, uh, we should keep the camera as, uh, as uh, straight as forward as uh, possible. Of course, we need no obstructions between the plate and the camera. So no trees in the middle, no, we already saw a case that the camera was installed behind a wall, not a wall, but a, a gate, okay? And uh, once the gate was closed, it, it, the, the plate was hidden by the camera. So uh, we need, of course, to have a clear view. Focus. Now we can see two examples here one to the left, one to the right. The left one is very unfocused image. The right one is very focused, but we need to remember that sometimes the camera is really a little bit out of focus and we can barely notice it with our eyes, if, only if we look very good. And uh, But for the camera, it's very crucial in order to get the plate. Okay, so if the camera is even a little bit out of focus, then we should just click the one uh, one key focus button that every, camera, every uh, motorized uh, camera we have uh, has, it has this button. The camera will refocus and of course we can uh, continue work. Using a fill eye, this is very optional. In some countries, the license plates are uh, reflective, both the background and the characters that are written on the plate. So if the, if the plate is fully reflective, it means that if you light, if you uh, throw, if you uh, lighten the plate, then you will see reflection, then the camera won't be able to recognize the plate. So in this kind of, kind of cases that the plate is fully reflective, it is very recommended to use a fill light. A fill light will provide some extra light from different angles, so the camera won't be dazzled by the extra light, and you will be able to get the recognition properly. Um, we haven't, uh, maybe 5% of the countries have this uh, kind of a plate, so it's very rare case, and of course, uh, a very rare solution. Entrance and the exit for uh, installation. How will we install the camera? So as we talked before, as Amnon said before, there are two main uh, uses for the camera, for the LPR camera. One of them is the, the gate, and one of them is the street monitoring. Of course, the installation for uh, each one will be different. So first, let's see the installation for a gate. Okay, a gate installation. Um, the gate installation will be done in a lower height. We all know the entrance to parking lots. We can see the LPR camera. It is usually very low between 1.2 to 1.5. You can even place it lower or, or higher. But of course, the mandatory part is to have a, a plate that is recognizable from a not very high angle so that the plate is visible to our eyes and of course to the camera. The proportions, we're going to get back, get back to something that we talked about a few minutes before. The size of the plate should be between 6 to 50%. The pan angle should be between 15 to 25. Now, what, the pan angle, it means the left and right angle of the camera. So the angle that the camera is looking at the car, okay, the plate. It cannot be a zero from a because of a logical uh, reason. If the camera is placed in a lower height, as it should, and if the pan angle will be zero, it means that the camera is straight forward in, in front of the plate. And if the car will move forward, it will crash into the camera. So the uh, pan angle in this case is, is 15 to 25 if we keep the lower height that uh, is recommended. The tilt, the tilt angle, the angle that the camera will look on the camera from ups and up and down, uh, should be also between 15 to 25 degrees. Okay, I need a, uh, I, th I think it was small lose of power. Amnon, can you hear me? Yes, yes. Yes, Go okay, ahead. perfect, okay, okay. Let's continue. Um, yes. Now we have the, uh, the, recogni the recognition distance between the car to the camera. The, rec the recognition distance, when we talk about gate uh, installation, uh, is between 1.5 meters. Okay, the car should be far from the camera between uh, 1.5 meters to 3 meters away. And when we talk about the deceleration zone, it means that uh, in this uh, in this distance, okay, of 1.5 to 3, 
the car should be in a lower speed, meaning before of a speed bump or before the gate itself, the camera that the car will stop. If the camera moves uh, 100 kilometers per hour in front of the camera, then we won't get um, a, we won't get a proper recognition, of course, because it's above the 40 kilometers that the camera is uh, able to capture. So we have here the height and we have here the distance. Of course, that the camera can recognize from much farther distance than three meters. It can go even to five and 10 and more. But when we talk about gate uh, and we uh, comply to the angles that we're going to install the camera, then the best uh, recognition distance will be between 1.5 to three meters. Okay. Our next installation will be an installation for the street monitoring. In this case, the, the installation height, in this case, the installation height will be between four to six meters. And, uh, and of course, that uh, the installation is different when we talk about the street. Okay, it's not a gate no more, so the height is higher. We still comply to the same recognition, the, the size of the plate that it should be compared to the frame. It's still between six to 50% of the size. We can see here an image describing the, a good installation for a street monitoring. We see a vehicle, the, ve the vehicle doesn't move very fast. Okay, so uh, the vehicle, I'm sorry, we have a little uh, side background noises here that we're uh, trying to solve. Um, so the vehicle won't move very fast until 40 kilometers per hour, a fairly large uh, plate. In this case, we can install the camera in a pan angle of even zero because the camera is placed higher than the vehicle. Uh, the tilt angle keeps on being between 15 to 25 degrees. I can tell you that it can recognize a little bit longer, more than that, but uh, yet again, won't be ideal. Um, in this case, in this camera, you remember before we talked about MVF1, MVF2, I'm not talked about it, different uh, 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 width of the lens for each camera. The MVF1 is 2.812 and MVF2 is 7.22. So in this case, for street monitoring, we will probably prefer to use the MVF2, which is 7 to 22 millimeters. It, it gives us a longer distance for recognizing a plate. Okay, it's narrowing the, the view, but it, it's increasing the zoom. So of course, it will give you better recognition for longer distances. This is one of the reasons that we have here ability to recognize for up to 30 meters. Okay, the camera, the car can be it can be as far as 30 meters from the camera. Um, okay, now when it comes to the street monitoring, the cameras can be installed in two different ways. Of course, street monitoring, we're talking about a camera that's placed sideways or in the middle of the road. The camera can capture two lanes, up to two lanes. Of course, we need to keep in mind that if the camera is placed in this kind of a way, Okay, if the camera is placed uh, in the, on the left side of the lane, you have vehicles uh, moving from uh, either side, then the recognition will be much better for the closer lane because of two main reasons. First of all, the far, the far vehicle will be, sometimes it will be hidden if there is another vehicle that is passing at the same time. Second reason is because that it is a little bit more far, it's farer and it's, uh, uh, the angle is uh, sharper than uh, the closer lane. So if you want 100% of a recognition uh, for both lanes, comply with the take this angle, for example, okay, place the camera in the road middle and not on a highway, of course, because then the camera will uh, lose uh, ca uh, captures that of uh, vehicles that are above 40 kilometers per hour. ROI. What is the ROI region of interest? In the um, in CCTV world or in camera world uh, in general, the ROI means the area that will be uh, get the better uh, encoding for the camera quality. But in uh, in the LPR, the ROI uh, the ROI is also meant to describe the area where we will recognize the plate. So, for example, in a in a in a park, in a parking lot, in the gate, in a gate controller installation, 
we will prefer to draw the ROI in a way that it will capture only the vehicles that are entering into the parking lot instead of accidentally get vehicles that are passing from the side. So we will just adjust our ROI uh, in a way that uh, no other plates will be accidentally captured. Okay, so we can draw it in a certain height or in a certain location that you know that only the vehicles that you want will be captured. Of course, there are uh, some other abilities in the camera. You can draw uh, ignoring uh, uh, areas, up to four areas that the camera will ignore from them. And that way you can also skip unwanted plate recognitions. That was for the gate. Now for the street monitoring, how will we draw the ROI? We will draw the ROI next to the lane that is closer to the camera, okay? And of course, we will uh, try to uh, draw the, the, the ROI where the, camera, where the car is as closer as possible to the camera. If we will draw the ROI back there, I hope you can see the mark on my mouse. If you will draw the ROI over there, it's very far and the plate that the camera will capture will be captured very far from the camera. So our goal is to draw the ROI as close as possible. Don't even put the ROI on, on the entire screen because the camera might recognize the plate when it's um, very far and it will, won't be recognizable. Also, you can see that we didn't put the sidewalk on the ROI as well, because sometimes vehicles are parking there and then uh, they can get, the camera can get false recognition of the same plate over and over again. And this is something that we don't want. Now we're gonna see some uh, examples for uh, good and bad installations. So a good installation will be something similar to what we just saw. The camera is placed in a horizontal angle between a, a, a 15 to 25 degrees of an angle. We can see that the car, when it, as it turns, it is straight forward into the, into the camera itself and uh, it's very recognizable. A bad installation will be something like this. This is an installation, uh, I forgot where, from which country, it doesn't matter. Uh, the thing with this installation is that the camera, first of all, it is uh, in a very sharp angle. I can tell you that still the camera can recognize, but it will have some mistakes because of the angle. It's very barely visible with our own eyes. And the second reason is that even though that the camera is placed very close to the car, still the plate is very small. Okay, so the car, the car, the camera is not placed in a way that the car will be forced to move very close to the camera because the car can move a little bit to the right uh, and have this angle. Of course, combining these two reasons, you get a very difficult scenario for the camera to recognize. So what we will do better, we will probably want to install the camera much closer to the center where the car is passing. Uh, and of course, make sure that uh, we make some tests before, to make sure the car is actually close to the uh, camera when it, when it, as it passes. Uh, some good and bad installation for street monitoring. Okay, until now we saw the gate, now we're gonna see for street. In this case also, we can see a good installation. The camera is placed in a decent height. We can see that the plate is recognizable. We can probably see it with our own eyes. A, a bad installation would be something like this. In here, in this case, we can see that, uh, first of all, the cars are very, very far away. Second of all, there are many parking vehicles that the, car, the camera might uh, accidentally uh, recognize. And we can see some vehicles that are parking right in the middle of the road. So, so of course, that when the camera was first install, installed, this car probably wasn't there. But uh, those are things that we need to think about uh, from the starters. We need to figure out, okay, maybe sometimes there are trucks that are unloading uh, goods for uh, stores and such. So we need to think to make sure that the, the camera is placed uh, uh, as good as possible, even when we look towards the future. Try to expect uh, to things that, they, that are, might go wrong and try to solve them before they go wrong. Okay, so we have here a bit of uh, more examples for uh, unwanted installation. In the upper left image, we can see, uh, we basically can see a, a camera that is uh, capturing the entire parking lot with many parking vehicles. Uh, there is no clear it's not very clear where the cars are supposed to, to arrive and sometimes vehicles are just wandering around. So this is not a, a good installation. The installation should be 
uh, where the car is actually accessing and not just in the middle of the road. Uh, in the near it, in the near, uh, in the right, right above the picture, top right picture, we can see an installation that basically was made in a. It's not a highway, but it's a, you know, those roads that uh, they're not a highway, but people just uh, drive very fast. So the vehicles over there are very, very drive uh, a very in a very high uh, speed, and the plates are uh, cannot be recognized very very much. Of course, that um, the camera does recognize, but it will miss some vehicles because of the speed and because of the distance from the vehicles themselves. On the uh, lower left image, we can see that uh, it's very clear what is wrong in this case. It's just the angle. Okay, we can see that the angle is very sharp. It's very difficult for the camera to recognize. The closer lane is uh, pretty much okay with this Chrysler in the middle. We can see that it could be recognizable, but the main lanes, this is just a parking lot, but here the main lanes, this is what uh, we meant to, for the camera to recognize. But of course, the, when the cars are moving in this kind of, uh, a, of an angle, then it is very difficult to be recognized. And in the upper, in the lower right corner of the screen, the final example for a bad installation we have is this truck. Okay, the truck is very big, very huge, but still the plate is so small that it's barely recognizable. So again, we have here a case of uh, two longer distance. Okay, the distance from the vehicles are too long and it won't allow the camera to recognize properly. So David, we have- can you go back? David, can you go back? I would just say that, uh, first of all, when it comes to the image of the truck, there are solutions to fix this insulation. For example, in this case, they use the, a very ang wide angle lens. Actually, if they just replace the camera with a more narrow lens, they can reach good results. Uh, the image on the left, uh, the problem is bad installation. The angle is just way, it's almost 70 degree when we say when david just explained that the maximum tilt should be no more than 25 between 15 to 25 is okay in this case it was 70 70 degree uh, which is far 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 from the needed requirements go ahead david thank you thank you amnon so of course every every bit of installation there is something to do with it in order to make it better uh, but it will be better to think ahead of what we need to install in the scene in order for it to capture uh, as, uh, as much as possible. This is one of the reasons we are making those uh, the tutorials and explanation, explanatory uh, webinars that uh, discuss these subjects. So a thumb rule will be, keep in mind this one, if you can read a plate, so can the camera. So if you have a super good vision and you can recognize a plate from 300 meters, then this is not the case. But we're talking about the everyday uh, vision that we can see a plate. If you can see it, if you can, if you can read, most most likely that the camera will be able to recognize it as well, uh, angle-wise and distance-wise. In, in here, we can see a, a table that will explain to us what will be the recommended recognition for a plate with the different kinds of license plates. Okay, there are different sizes of plates, depends on the continent you are in and the country you're in. So of course, this is for a later use for you guys. You can have access to this entire presentation, including the table. So you can uh, choose for yourself the best equipment for you to use. Um, just an example, if you're using, if you're in United States, for example, so the centimeter, the size of the plate normally in uh, United States will be 44 centimeters. So for the 722 millimeter camera, which is the MVF2, the maximum recognition distance will be, pay attention, it is in centimeters. So it's two, 2,274 uh, 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 centimeters, which are 22 meters. And the minimum recognition distance will be approximately about three meters, a little bit less than three meters. Okay, so the, our summary will be, that we need to come we need to keep our general logic the plate should be, be able to read to be read by a, a human eye the size meet the size range that we discussed between 6 to 50 of uh, the total size of the plate and uh, uh, 10 to 50 between uh, of the height of the the plate itself a uh, detection area okay should be delivered the plate as its maximum size make sure that the plate is recognizable 
when you are watching through the camera in the video that the camera broadcasts. Duration, if the car, yet again, the car can be moving in 20 kilometers per hour, but visible for less than a second because of the angle or something that is not properly installed. And of course, the car can be moving in 100 kilometers per hour and in this reason, in this reason it is very understandable why it won't be recognizable. So we need to keep in mind that for a good recognition, make sure that the plate, that the camera has some time to view the plate. About one, two seconds, it will be more than enough for the camera to recognize a plate. Okay, so now, after we discussed about how to install the camera, there are, of course, some settings that we can do from in within the cameras. There are many different kinds of settings, but uh, some of them are more crucial to recognition. Some of, the, of them are less. We're, we're going to uh, we're going to discuss those uh, those settings. Okay, those settings will help us to deal with high speed vehicle, with high light scenes, various scenes, car plate reflections, backlight scene, low light scene, and many different other scenes that uh, just a simple click, a simple setting on the camera itself might solve. And the thing with artificial intelligence cameras is that they are very dependent on the quality of the image that they receive. And of course, in LPR, where the camera has to differentiate between uh, different kinds of characters. So we need to make sure that the, the camera gets the, uh, the image as, as best as possible uh, to increase our recognition uh, abilities. Okay, so first let's talk about day and night. Okay, first of all, the best night result will be achieved when the camera is at night mode with IR on. So if we are at night, the IR should be on. It will light on the can on the license plate. It will be it will uh, uh, get the light back into the camera. The camera will recognize the plate and everything is good. This can be achieved by setting the camera to schedule day and night day and night. Now, of course, we have an ability to make the camera to change automatically between day and night. But if we do that, we will have two possible problems. We will going to uh, see them right now. Uh, in the opposite way, we, we're going to see what is this, what, what's the scheduled day and night will solve us. So those are the problems. Number one, the headlights from, the, from a vehicle, the vehicle is now approaching to the camera and the headlights are directly into the camera. It will cause the camera to switch from black and white, from night mode into day mode because there is light into the camera. The sensor gets some light and the camera thinks, okay, this is daytime now. Let's switch to day mode. So this is a problem. The camera should stay on the night mode. If you ask yourself, then of course there is a time that we can tell the camera, okay, yeah. how long after you saw those lights, how long after that you're going to actually switch from day and night. So of course this is one of the solutions also to solve in this case, but there is another problem, street lights. Sometimes the car, the street light might be not very good for recognizing a plate, but it will be good enough for the camera to, to remain in a day in, in, in color mode, in day mode. Okay, it's because the area is pretty much uh, lit and seen. We can see the scene very good. Also here we can see fairly good image, but uh, it's not good enough for a plate. So this is a, those are the two reasons why we will prefer to use a scheduled day and night. This is less crucial in other cameras, but when we talk about artificial intelligence and, and LPR especially, then this part becomes very important. Okay, brightness, the brightness of the camera. Now we all know that when we increase the brightness, we can see a brighter image, which sometimes will be uh, better looking, sometimes less better looking, but uh, Problem in uh, in LPR is that uh, sometimes we would like to lower the brightness. Okay, such in this case, we would like to lower the brightness, get um, a darker image, but we are making sure that the plate is recognizable. So in the first image up above, we can see that the brightness level is by default, it is 25, and we can see that the plate is also visible. But in many cases, especially at night, it might be ref over reflective and over burned. Basically, we will, all we will be able to see is uh, white pixels, which will, uh, it's, it's white pixels, so we cannot see the, the plate itself, what is written on it. And of course, that the camera won't be able to recognize. When we lower the brightness, the overall image will turn black, but the, bright, the plate is, uh, will be recognizable. And this is the important thing. 
this is the entire idea of an LPR camera to recognize a plate. We don't care about the rest. Okay, so the image from our point can be even black and white as long as the plate is recognizable. We're not here to film some views and the very good scenarios. We need to uh, make the camera to capture the plate. Okay, the gain is, in, uh, is a feature in the camera that, uh, that amplifies the image brightness in a digital way. So it basically takes a lower, lower uh, image, uh, lower brightness of an image and uh, digitally increase it to make the image look a little bit more vivid with higher colors and higher brightness, but it will cause some kind of a noise. Not noise that we can hear, but noise that we can see. So if you look closer to the image down below, we can see that the, the colors, okay, we can see that the image is a little bit grainy. It will cause uh, some issues when, of course, in this case, we took uh, the gain to its highest point, so we can see that the noise is very clearly. But if we use a gain, then it might also uh, make the camera lose its, uh, uh, not recognize very good uh, plates because of this higher gain. Shutter. A shutter is a, is a, a digital component in, a, in any camera. In some cameras it's digital, some other not. In our case, it's a digital component that uh, allows light to enter to the camera, to the sensor. In, um, uh, it basically opens and closes few times in a second and it will allow the light to enter to the camera and uh, depend on the value that we will give to our shutter it will be the the result the result will be how clear the image we are going to get okay how uh, clear the image is going to be when the object is moving so for for example we can see on the top image on the upper right image on the top we can see that the, the shutter is set to 1-25, 1.1, 1, one parts out of 25. It means that this, the shutter will open and close 25 times in a second. It sounds a lot, but actually it's not because when a, an object is moving very fast, we can see here a waterfall, then instead of seeing the waterfall very clearly, we're going to see that the waterfall is very blurry. And just think about what will happen if you, you have a vehicle that is moving and the camera should recognize the LPR. The LPR will be very blurred and the camera won't be able to recognize it. We have another scenario for 1.100. It means that the, car, the shutter will open and close 100 times in a second. It gives us a slightly better, clearer image. Okay, still not the best, but it's better than 1.25. And for better result, we can use higher, uh, a, a lower actually. This is a lower number, 1.750 is lower than 1.25. And in this case, we're gonna see that the image will be much, much clearer, giving us better ability to recognize a plate, especially when the vehicle is moving. Now I can tell you that the, those uh, settings right here, we will most likely use even higher than, even lower than that. Okay, we might even use 1.1000, 1 1.2000, in some cases, 10,000. Okay, so we can see a small explanation. In this case, more light enters the sensor, but fast moving objects might appear blurry. In lower values, we're gonna see that less light enters the sensor, but the image is uh, sharper. Our next uh, point will be the license plate exposure. Okay, so of course that the camera has ability to uh, adjust itself, uh, uh, the colors and the brightness in order to get uh, to get have a, a, a clearer image. But uh, these settings inside the camera, we're going to see it later on. The setting for license plate exposure will basically take the area of the ROI of the plate. We uh, we have we draw the ROI around the area that we want, and the camera will uh, adjust the entire image according only to where the ROI is located. Okay, so that the camera will uh, digitally improve the image quality only to get the, uh, the area of, the, of the, where the plate is going to be recognized to get this area to be as bright as possible or actually as visible as possible. The idea is to get visible plate with less cons uh, consideration on other parts of the image. I could have read that, it will be much simpler. Okay, so when the image is already too dark or bright, this feature won't work. Okay, of course, because it is too too far away, too, uh, uh, it's too uh, bright or too dark. So in this case, we, we might need to uh, 
to change where the ROI is located. Now for settings for day and for night. So there are uh, in the camera, there are uh, some settings, a different set of settings that we can pre-adjust. So we can set a setting for day and we can set for night. When we change, change between them, the presets will change. So for day, we have this kind of parameters. We can see here the numbers 25 and 50 all the way down to the zero. And in night, different preset. Brightness is two and uh, some other uh, uh, parameters are different in here. Of course, that we can adjust the parameters according to what fits our needs, according to the place where the camera is at and etc. Now we have two ways to switch between day and night. If you are with me, so you already know one of them, actually both of them. One of them is automatic. So we will make the camera to switch automatically between day and night based on the amount of light that's around the camera. Secondly, by schedule, we're gonna see it also in the camera. You can just set the, we have a, a bar of 24 hours. You can set which uh, time on the bar is day night, uh, daytime and which one is nighttime. So in this case, of course, we can see even a legend here. It's a night will be a, a gray and day will be day, a, a red. And uh, using the bars, we can tell the camera when to switch between day and night. So of course, in this case, you can solve a lot of the problems we discussed before. Let's have a closer look on the settings themselves. So uh, what will be the recommended day mode image settings? Uh, the brightness will be the default value. By the way, the default is 25. I don't know why it is the five in here, but ignore it, it's 25. Uh, default value, basically when we're talking about daytime, okay, when talking about daytime, usually there is no need to mess around with the settings. It will usually just work with the default settings because daytime is less hard to recognize than nighttime, which is a kind of a surprise because at nighttime, the recognition uh, percentage is, is higher if the camera is set properly because of the contrast differences. And then in nighttime, only black and white, you have higher contrast. So the camera can recognize easily between the characters. So uh, we can see here the parameters for, of course, we can go, uh, we will see them uh, on the camera. And of course that you will be uh, able to exit this presentation later on to check them out. Let's focus now on the bright, on the night uh, settings. So in the night, the brightness will be a little bit lower. It's not 25, it's five. Uh, we're gonna set uh, the infrared mode for automatic to, for the camera to decide by itself to move uh, to the to infrared mode yes or no and of course the brightness will be set to the uh, to around zero to around around five as i said and uh, we can see the example between two different images okay one is for the left one is from the right the left one has been kept on the default value of 25 we're talking about the brightness we can see that the vehicle is very visible the surrounding is very visible as well but the plate is overly cooked. Okay, the plate is uh, overexposed, so it's very white. We cannot see it. When we lower the brightness, keep that in mind. It's super important. Lower the brightness. Have a bad total image if you want, because it's uh, have a it's a bit darker. But the plate is perfect. Okay, the camera recognizes the plate, even some of the vehicle, and this is what's important. So in day night mode, we're gonna choose night. Infrared mode will be automatically. The shutter will be according to the live scene. Remember the shutter for fast moving vehicles, fast moving objects. Of course, if you choose the shutter mode, you can choose more manually or uh, automatic. And even for the automatic, you can tell the camera, don't go above 1.750. It will be always between 1.750 to 1. 1,000. The camera will choose for itself some kind of a range it fits its own, but it won't go lower, uh, higher actually, from a 1.750. Of course, it will do that. If the camera will do that, then um, uh, it might uh, choose a value that is not good for recognizing the plate. Okay. Uh, now, this is the end of the presentation. I would like to, for, first of all, I'm gonna stop the sharing. I want to first of all thank you all for joining our uh, presentation. I'm going to show you now a little bit of uh, our website. It will take really like two or three minutes. 
show you the website where you can find access to the former uh, webinars that we done, how you can access the, uh, the future uh, webinars that we are planning. And of course, we have a goal as Provision ISA. We want to improve all the time. We want to give better, uh, better service and better products and to generally have an improvement. So we're starting today to, uh, in the end of uh, each webinar, we're gonna provide you a link in the chat for a small survey. It's a survey for about 10 questions. Uh, if you want, if you have the time to answer it, it's very short and will help us a lot. Uh, then you're very welcome to do that. I don't know if you can uh, send the link through the chat, uh, it will be good because I'm, I'm going to share the screen to show the website. Yes, I will. Uh, while uh, David is opening the website, first of all, David, thank you very much. Uh, for those of you that are still with us, uh, first of all, you are free to write any question you have on the chat box, and I will ask on behalf of you. Very soon, uh, you will be able also to open your microphone and ask away. Um, thank you very much for joining. Like I said, this webinar was recorded, so you will get the recording and you can also find it in our website. David will show you now where. And you are welcome to join our other seminars. And uh, David is gonna show you now where you can find access to all the seminars that we did in the past or doing in the future. And you can view it on your own time. And I will, on the chat box, I will send you the link to a short uh, form that you may feel it's a sur short survey that help us to improve those kind of seminar to see how well it was explained to you, how well you learned, or if you think there is something to improve. We're very happy to learn. And thank you very much. David, close the recording. Okay. There is a question about, can you capture the direction in or out, David? Can you capture the direction? You can capture the direction in or out using the shop software. The camera doesn't know if uh, the car has accessed or left, okay? Because it does, it captured the plate, not the front or the back of the vehicle. Uh, using the shop, shop software, I'm gonna show you right now how to access the webinar. One of them is the shop, so we can, actually see it but it's a software that we have developed and uh, it is mainly for managing for access control actually but also for managing a parking lot using this software you can uh, you can install the camera okay for entrance and the camera for exit the shop itself does the thinking for you and is uh, and by by setting it up you can actually know which car has access through the entrance camera which one has left through the exit karma with many different features. Uh, really, it's uh, we can do the entire webinar about the shop now, but you, you're very welcome to see it. Uh, if you give me just one second, I need to can hey, David, show us here on the knowledge sharing section uh, webinar area. Okay, knowledge sharing, it goes like this. First of all, you have a, a you have the how-to tutorial Okay, it's a section in our a new section in our website that will give you explanation about many different, including the shop, many different uh, elements that we are uh, that we have. And if you will go into the knowledge sharing again, into the live webinar, okay, into the live webinar, you will be able to see the upcoming live events. Okay, this is the one we are at right now. Another one at 4 p.m. You can see the name of the a webinar, how long it will take. You can see the future one in seven days from now about the DA for is also two times a day, 11 a.m. and 4 p.m. You can register from now, you can register into the webinar itself. And you can, of course, uh, there are also webinars for uh, Spanish. And of course you can see past events. Okay, in the past events, you can just see the date it, it took place, this webinar, and you can just click the button and you can watch again the uh, you can watch again the entire webinar that uh, uh, that we did uh, in a simple click of a button so uh, so it's very new we're constantly working on improving ourselves and the website to make it uh, 
to help you access the entire information that you want as fast as possible. David, show us also about where you can find more information about the LPR in general in the show. Under knowledge sharing, I think it's under... Uh... You know, it will be in software and in shop. We have another, uh, another uh, section here. It's software. As you see, we have a lot of different software. One of them is the shop. And if you will access into here, we're going to see the entire, the, basically all the information you might uh, need for, uh, for the shop itself, including the main features, uh, snapshots with the features, different, uh, how it actually looks like, what you can do with it, what you cannot, uh, all of those things compiled into one web page, which is very concentrated and uh, effectively giving you the information without wasting your time. And of course, you are going to be able to take a tour into the LPR page. You can download the LPR leaflet of the camera itself and discover the LPR cameras themselves. Okay, uh, also, I would like to suggest for those of you that are interested to learn about the parking management solution, David, go to the webinars, find the seminar we did about show about uh, three weeks ago, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Uh, so for those of you that want to learn a little bit more about the shop software and the parking management solution software, we just had a uh, webinar about, uh, I think it was about three weeks ago, about the shop software. There it is. Uh, here it is. And oh, it was actually a long time ago. And we are having another one next month in May about the shop. However, here you can watch the seminar and learn a lot about the features uh, that you have in the parking management solution. As a total overall solution, when you have the camera and the parking management solution, you have a winning solution for LPR market. Like I said in the beginning, just coming with a good LPR